Hello everybody, in this lesson, we're gonna see how we can read and write files within R. Now, as you can see down here, we have this Parks and Rec data set. I will leave you know, the GitHub below so that you can go and you can get this exact file. It's just a little sample file that we are gonna pull in. But what we can do is we can literally click on this and we can import this data set. Now, in order to do that, there are some packages that we need and we do want to install these. So let's go ahead and get those installed and then we'll continue. Now you can see right down here, this is the code that they are writing to bring in this data set. And coincidentally enough, in just a second, we're gonna write this exact same thing. And there are different ways to write it. We don't actually have to use this library right here. There are tons of other libraries or even default things within R that we can use, but this is our data set. And we can import this data set just like this. And it's going to be saved into our memory, into our data. And now we have this data frame. So then if we come over here, we can call in this parks and rack data set. And I can just hit tab and I can run this. And it's going to show all of this data. And that is a very simple way to do it. Now, the only downside to doing it like this is if you are creating some type of automation. Let's say you're pulling in data from somewhere from the web and then you're creating a CSV file. You're pulling that data into here with that CSV file and you're manipulating it, you're changing it, then you're writing another file after you've cleaned up that data for a specific purpose. Now in that scenario, doing it like this is not gonna work at all because you need to actually write out the code so it's saved to the file. And so we are not gonna do it like that. I don't really recommend that unless there's just some one-off file that you just wanna get in here and you know do whatever with. Let's go ahead and sweep this because uh, we, we don't need it. Um, what we can do is we can come in here, we can write very similar code. So I'm just gonna show you how to do it uh, without anything. So we're gonna do read.csv. So read.csv, all we have to do is pass through the file name. There's a lot of other what are called parameters or arguments that you can pass through as well. So, you know, if we were uh, writing it out again, if we write out read.csv, you can come in here and you can get additional help on this and look at all the different parameters that they have in here that you can pass through. Now, what we need to do is pass through this file. So let's come down here. I have this uh, Parks and Rec data set. I'm going to click on it and I'm going to copy this as a path. Now you can do that with a shortcut control shift C, but I'm just going to paste it in there. And if we try to run this, and actually let's really quick, let's declare this as our data frame. But if we try to run this, then it's not going to work. This backslash is actually a special character. What it does is it says that this Y, the letter right next to it, is a special character. Now we can actually negate this by putting another backslash. And then what we're saying is, is the special character is this right here. And so it just keeps it. And we can, whoops, let me put it in the right spot. So we can put in a double slash and that's perfectly acceptable. Let's go ahead and run it. And now we have our data frame right here and we can click on it. We can open up this data frame and it's beautiful. We're doing uh, some Parks and Rec. And this is what we're gonna be using in the next several lessons, uh, this small Parks and Rec data set. But that is how we can read in a CSV file. Now there's lots of different types of file formats. There's JSON, Excel, et cetera. There's lots of different ones, but this is in a nutshell how you do it. You may just need you know, a different way to read it in, but there's so many different file formats that you can read in within R, just about anything you can imagine. Now, when we have this data frame, we've created it, it's up here, it looks great. Now we can start messing with this data frame. We can use it, we can look at it. For example, we can use this right here, which says the head of the data frame is going to give us the first five rows of that data set. I guess it's giving us the first six here, but this is just a sample of the data. You can imagine, because we're going to be working with larger data sets, especially as we get towards the end, that if you have a thousand, ten thousand, a hundred thousand rows, you don't want to look at all of that every single time. You may just want to print out just a few rows of the data. And that is how you can do this. We also have a few different things that we can do to kind of check our data that we just pulled in. This one right here, and let's see if we have it right here. This gives us the structure of our data frame. So if we come and open the parentheses and pass through our data frame, and so what it's gonna tell us is gonna say, here is the character, the department, the role, these are our columns. 
And it says this is a character column, character, character. These are strings. And then annual salary. This is an integer. And then dogs rescue with three legs. That's also an integer. Another one that you might use, and I do use these, by the way, because I often, uh, you know, kind of want to see how the data is sitting. Another one we can use is summary. And this is going to give us some statistics of our data set. Now, more specifically, this is really good for our numeric columns, but it's not as good or useful for our character columns. But we have some min, first quarter, median, mean, third quartile, or quarter, but I'll call it quartile, max, um, and the same for the other one. So it gives us just a little bit of information about our numeric columns, and that can be really helpful. Now, like I said, there are different things when we're pulling in data. I'm going to pull this down. There are different things that we might want to use. For example, if we say header, the header says whether we're going to keep our headers in our file or not. So if I say equals false. I'm going to do data frame two here. So we're pulling this in and we're saying the header is equal to false. Now, if we run this, it's going to look a little bit different. So now this row as our headers, which are our column names, now they are actually part of the data. And so if you don't have a header on your data, it's just goes straight into the data on, you know, row one, this would be something you need to write in there. Otherwise it's going to not understand that. Although it does have header as a default saying true, because we didn't put it up here, default is true, you can specify that it is false. Another thing that you might need to use, and let's go back here, is SEP. This stands for a separator. Now, by default, when you're pulling in a CSV, it's going to be a comma, because that's what CSV stands for, a comma separated value file. That's what a CSV file is. Now, we don't have to keep it as a comma. Let's say, for example, uh, we have a space that's separating everything, or we have a dash that's separating everything. It's whatever you want it to be. Now, by default, again, it is a comma. And if we run this and we go back up to our data frame two, it's going to be the exact same. But if we change it to something like a space, we're going to completely change how this file looks. Now, every space that you see within here is going to be a different column. It's going to separate it out like this, and this looks terrible. So we definitely don't want to do that, but it is something that you should be aware of as a parameter that we can pass through. And so let's run this correctly, and let's actually put this back to the default. Let's run this. Let's say we have our data frame, and we've done some things to it. We are happy with it. Maybe we've aggregated some of the data, and now we say, okay. I want to export this to a file. Instead of read.csv, we're going to write.csv. So write.csv right here is going to put all of this data into a file. So we're going to do this. And what we're going to do is we're going to pass through this exact same thing. I'm going to pass through this file path. But we have to specify what we're passing into that file path. So we're going to say here, take data frame two. And then here's where you're going to place it. Now, we don't want to call it the exact same thing. It will overwrite our previous file. We don't want that. So we're going to say uh, output. So now we're taking this data frame two, which is the exact same data. We haven't done anything to it, but you know, uh, we're taking this data frame two, and now we're going to export that data set or that data frame into a file. Let's go ahead and run this. And there we go. So now we have our parks and rack data set. If we then wanted to read that in, and we can, let's come right over here. We're gonna do underscore output. And let's do this as data frame three now. Let's run this. Now we have our data frame three and there is our data set. You'll notice we now have six variables instead of the five. That's because when we exported our data set, it brought along this index right here. What we can do is let's overwrite the, that previous one. Let's put a comma here and we're going to do row dot names. This says whether or not we want that index to be written with it or not. And we're going to say false. So let's overwrite that file and then let's read this in again. And let's go take a look at our data frame three. It no longer has that extra column with the index. We got rid of that when we wrote it to the file. So this is the basics of working with files. It of course goes more in depth. You can connect to APIs, you can connect to databases,
You can connect to a lot of different file paths, but this is the basics of how you can read and write and create data frames with files. So thank you guys so much for watching. In the next lesson, we're gonna see how we can select and order our data that we pulled into a data frame.